Antonio back on the field. Yeah, and all the attention, you know, he's not an attention getter by any means, Chris. I've known him nearly 10 years at Ohio State and Cincinnati and now here. He doesn't like the attention normally and especially with his, uh, with his uh, illness. And missed two games after the heart attack following the Notre Dame win and then was in the hospital after a blood clot as the kickoff by Demo sails through the end zone and will come out to the 20. The ESPN College Football presented by Cars.com. With Bob Greasy, Chris Spielman, Quid Kestick down on the field. I'm Dave Pash. Michigan State number seven in the initial BCS standings, the highest they've ever been. They're 7 0 for the first time since 1966. And Kirk Cousins is their quarterback, completing 66% of his passes, 11 touchdowns, and only four interceptions. Michigan State traveling outside the state for the first time this year. Baker running left, and he's out to the 17, dropped by Brian Peters. Well, Michigan State, very good running team, but they struggled just 93 yards in a win against Illinois, so they'll expect more out of Baker today. Nickel and Cunningham, the starting receivers. Charlie Gander caught the game-winning touchdown in the fake field goal against Notre Dame. And the guys up front. Uh, John Stepek, DJ Young, both very upset. Even though they beat Illinois last week, we mentioned the fact that they struggled running the football just three yards per carry. And Cousins looked like a backward pass. And Keyshawn Martin near the first down marker. Bumped out of bounds at the 29. Well, that's the guy they want to get the ball out to on the edge. Keyshawn Martin is a reverse guy and their bubble screen guy. Now you'll see Jared Carpenter your defensive back coming into the pitcher and takes a poor angle. You cannot take poor angles against the athletes on the edges of Michigan State or they'll run right through an arm tackle. It's all about angles, Greece. Yeah, bottom line is Northwestern had it covered, missed a tackle, and first down. Was ruled a forward pass, but third and one for Michigan State. Just shy of the 30-yard line. Or close to a first down. Le'Veon Bell, true freshman in it, running back. He's averaging seven yards a carry. He's their big back, and they give it to him here, but he's not going to get the first down. Corbin Bryant, senior defensive tackle from here in Chicago, made the play. Michigan State is last in the Big Ten in picking up third downs on offense. There's a lot of good things they do offensively, but picking up third downs is not one of them. The Northwestern is first in the league in third down defense at 29%. Corbin Bryant, penetration kills any short yardage play. Back to receive the punt is Hunter Bates. Aaron Bates, no relation, punting for Michigan State. And Bates from the 25 gets some blocks. And it gets slammed down at the 39-yard line by Marcus Hyde. But a good return. That Fitzgerald has done a tremendous job here at Northwestern. They're 5-1 and one on the season. They've had a winning record in the Big Ten each of the last two years. Played a thrilling Outback Bowl. Overtime loss to Auburn. Right now, one of the best teams in the country in 2010. Northwestern had a bye week last week, lost two weeks ago to Purdue here at Ryan Field. Dan Purser, the Wildcat quarterback, the nation's leader in completion percentage. He's going to run here, though, chased out of bounds by Jonathan Strayhorn. Purser at 78% completion rate, 10 touchdowns, only two picks. Second in the Big Ten in pass efficiency, fourth in the nation. So this kid is the offense for Northwestern. Persa in trouble. Able to get out of there. Chased down from behind and tackled at the 20-yard line. Play made by Isaiah Lewis, true freshman defensive back. Persa is a great athlete, runs the 40 in like four or five, got a lot of speed and a lot of intelligence, very athletic, scrambles a lot. In fact, he is the leading rusher on this ball club. Against Minnesota a couple weeks back, he had 99 yards, but Northwestern has gone 19 straight games without a 100-yard rusher. You see the speed package. It looks like Sandlot football right in there. Everybody stand up, pick a gap, and go. <laughs> 
No rush three. And Purse has got a man wide open. Pulled in by Sidney Stewart for a first down, a breakdown in Michigan State's coverage. Well, you talk about a true freshman that made a nice play, Isaiah Lewis, by chasing Purse down. Here he has a blown assignment. He gets a knock on a receiver downfield, and he's over there covering dirt. If you cover dirt, you got to find a man. The ball comes out. It's an incomplete pass. After they pick up third down and 18, they get 20 yards. Gordon broke up that pass for Michigan State. And that's what happens when you have a true freshman in there, is that when you have to be able to recognize once a guy goes through your zone, run to cover a man. Don't cover grass. Grass never has a completion, ever, in the history of the game. <laughs> Mike Trumpy in the backfield, a freshman. And he plows forward to about the 42, hit hard by Greg Jones. Going to bring up third down and long. Guys, Jones is on everybody's watch list for the Buckus Award. He was named a semifinalist this week. Are you guys sold based on what you've seen on film of Greg Jones? I'm going to defer because uh, he's, Chris has got the same thoughts I have. Uh, he's not playing up to the ability that he can play. No matter the numbers, you want to see certain things that he can execute as far as attacking and being a little bit more aggressive. I think he has more in him. Very good player, but he has a lot more to give. Persa going deep. Up for grabs, and it's pulled in at the 15-yard line by true freshman Rashad Lawrence. See the high tempo of Northwestern is Michigan State's trying to substitute. Now's the time you want to get a play called and roll. Purcell makes a good throw. Height, he's 6'2", jump, makes a great catch. The line of scrimmage ready to go. Johnny Adams had pretty good coverage. Purcell put it on the money. Now from the 13-yard line, Purcell's pass incomplete. Intended for Jeremy Ebert, their leader in catches and the Big Ten leader in receiving yards. So Northwestern, they don't have a lot of four and five star recruits, right, Greece? So what they do is they try to get any edge they can. And part of that is after a big play, Mick McCall and Pat Fitzgerald, they want to go hurry up, especially when you see Michigan State trying to substitute and get the proper personnel in there. It's a well coached football team, and they execute it at a high level. Ursa to throw again. Now takes off. Shakes one tackle and pushed out at the six yard line. Denzel Drone chased Persa out of bounds. Offense hustling to get back. As Chris just mentioned, one of the advantages that they have to level the playing field. Michigan State's got a lot of great athletes. Northwestern takes advantage of their quick up tempo to not let them substitute. We're going to play and we're going to do what we do on the offensive side. Drake Dunsmore is in the game. He hurt his ankle in practice Wednesday, but is playing. He's a guy they like to throw to in the red zone. Persa hit in the backfield by Gordon. Got rid of it complete to Ebert and out of bounds right at the first down marker. See the strength right there of Dan Persa. We met with him yesterday. He's a thick Nick now. He doesn't look like a quarterback. He's stalking. He's got big arms. And Eric Gordon, one of the better players as a linebacker in the Big Ten, could not bring him down. That's twice he made Eric Gordon miss on consecutive plays. It is a first down, so first and goal for the Wildcats. You see the hands on the hip of the Spartans defenders. I get a little nervous with 524 to go. They got their hands on their hips, indicating tired. Quarterback draw. Pursa to the goal line. Touchdown, Northwestern. Color that drive, Mike per Dan Persa. It was all Persa from the long pass down the field to Lawrence to keep it alive with a lot of sack breaking plays that he made down the field. Northwestern scores first again as Persa gets his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. 7 0 Wildcats. Take a look at number 72, Brian Moreau, pulling guard. 
Get penetration. There he is. It's a power O. BCS, number seven. Guess what? It's on the line. Last week against Illinois, Michigan State did not allow a touchdown for the first time in a Big Ten game since 2003. The Spartans have already given up one here to Dan Persa, his fourth rushing touchdown of the season as Northwestern converted three times on third down, including third and 18 on that drive. Bob, what's he saying on that phone to Coach he, McCall? He's talking to uh, Coach McCall, the offensive coordinator, asking him what coverages they were in. What did they do? What do you want to do the next time we get the football? Caper for Michigan State on the return. And down he goes at the 24. Good tackle. Let's go. Michigan State starting this drive from its 24 yard line and Cousins to throw just a second pass attempt of the game and it's caught first down grab at the 39 yard line Mark Dell on the catch got his hands under it it's a catch run play Baker on first down and he's out to the 43 yard line. So that's a gain of about four. You know, one of the things Kirk Cousins has improved on, we talk about touchdowns to intercept, interception ratio 11 to 4, but the coaches trusted more in putting them in a proper running play. He sees where the strength of the defense is, and he usually has a check with me that he'll call the running play from the line of scrimmage away from the strength of defense. And that takes time and repetition, and Kirk has certainly grown in that area. Junior quarterback from Holland, Michigan. Five straight games over 200 yards passing and 14 straight games with a touchdown pass. The school record is 16 straight. Big hole for Baker, but he lost the ball. And Northwestern has it. It's one of the things that Michigan State had been good on about not turning it over. And this is a recipe on the road for upset here, guys. Turning McNall the ball over. The fumble. Sorry, Grace. Oh, yeah. Turning the ball over on the road. Northwestern doesn't need any anything else to get them fired up in this fans. The that's, guy that, that's it. That's that's the recipe right there for defeat. Just Dan Vaughn recovers the fumble. Bryce McNall, who wears Pat Fitzgerald's old number, 51, with the forced fumble. Northwestern already 138 yards total offense. Persa going to get more. Dragged down at the 36 yard line. Got three. Greg Jones on the stop. Jacob Schmidt, who had the fumble on the one yard line, getting taped up right now. And Mike Trumpy in the game for him. And Trumpy will get the call. And he fumbled the ball. It's picked up by Trenton Robinson of Michigan State. Another lost fumble by the Wildcats. Tyler Hoover forced the fumble again. Let's see if Trumpy was down before the ball came out. Yes, it looked like the ground caused the fumble there. Yeah, and the ball was secure by Trumpy. It wasn't moving around within his framework, so. Certainly, that's going to probably now. Certainly, and probably, <laughs> yes, it's probably going to be coming back. Northwestern three of four on third down. They had three third down conversions on their touchdown drive. Michigan State actually 0 for three now on third downs. Third and two for the Wildcats. Person will hand it off to Adonis Smith, and the true freshman picks up the first down. Brought down by Tyler Hoover. Converting third downs is a lot easier if it's third and five or four and three. Third and short rather than third and long. Third and ten, third and fifteen. You're not going to pick up many of those, and that's what Northwestern does. They chip away. Offensively, they chip away, and they get it down into third and three or four, and then they pick it up. Likely the final play of the first quarter. And Adonis again pushing the pile. Marcus Hyde was in there first for the Spartans, but that's a gain of seven yards for the true freshman Adonis Smith as the Wildcats lead number seven Michigan State after one. Back at Ryan Field, 
in Evanston, Illinois, Northwestern, which leads the Big Ten in number of plays run per game, had 22 in the first quarter. He had only seven points to show for it after a fumble on the goal line by Jacob Schmidt. Here's Mike Trumpy running on second and short. That's the eighth straight run play, and he comes up a little bit short. Eric Gordon made the tackle for Michigan State. You know, the interesting thing, Bob asked why his team's successful on third and shorts and third downs. The reason why you're seeing Northwestern successful on their third downs is they're getting a great push on the Michigan State front seven. And why Michigan State hasn't been successful on their short third downs is that the purple guys have been beating up the offensive linemen for the Spartans. They're winning the battle in the trenches. 19th play run by Northwestern coming up in Michigan State territory. Only time the Spartans got across the 50, they fumbled the ball. Ursa hit by Worthy and swallowed back at the 25-yard line. He hung around a little bit too long. Normally by that time, he's out of there scrambling somewhere. See Jarrell Worthy right here, and you're right, Bob. I think this happens to be a coverage sack. Good power rush move by Jarrell. He keeps working, working, keeping person in front of him because he knows he likes to run. That was great patience on a pass rush. And I'll tell you, that's hard to do is have patience on a pass rush. Yeah. Stefan Demos has missed five field goals, had two blocked this year. 37-yard attempt. And puts that one through to make it 10-0 Northwestern. The polls had Michigan State number eight, the computers number four. And that's why they're seventh in the BCS standings. Le'Veon Bell on in return for Sparty across the 25. And he's got some running room. And it's Demos, the kicker, that slows him up. Her Cousins only thrown it four times, completed three. I'll spread it out here. And wide open is Mark Dell over the middle. First down, Michigan State, a gain of 12. And Demos shaken up after the tackle on special teams. He's battling a hip injury and coming off a broken leg in the Outback Bowl, and that's the hip, the left hip. That's been hurting him lately. It looks like he got a Le'Veon Bell knee to the quad. Hopefully it's just a, a quad bruise. But I like what Michigan State's doing. They spread it out a little bit. They have to get a little bit of tempo and rhythm going within their offense. Le'Veon Bell trying to find a hole. Can't instead slam down by Nate Williams after a gain of two. Well, Michigan State does not play Ohio State this year. So essentially, the Spartans control their own destiny because they do play Iowa and Purdue. And last check, Purdue was getting pounded by Ohio State. You have to say pounded. I mean, that was 21-0 in the first quarter. quarter. Chris, you never say Ohio this, State's getting pounded. He speaks the truth, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Play fake. Cousins in trouble again. And incomplete. Corbin Bryant again with pressure. I know one thing that Michigan State's missing is Keyshawn Martin. A big play threat, especially in that slot receiver position, not in the ball game. On third and eight, Cousins zips that one in there, but it's incomplete. Intended for Keith Nickel. Coverage by Hunter Bates. It's fourth and eight, and Michigan State will try a field goal. A lot of good defense is set up by either getting in the throwing lanes, and that time Wabusi, number 33, I think, blinded Nickel before he got the ball. See Wabusi run right in front of him, understanding where the slant round is, and I think that blocked the vision of Nickel to be able to secure that catch. Dan Conroy perfect on the year and he's made 14 straight going back to last season the school record is 15 consecutive made field goals a 38 yard try to get the Spartans on the board missed it wide right boy that's when you know you know you got to fight now when you're 100 percent field goal kicker this is his first one on the year Snap, perhaps a little high, and the kick off the mark. It remains 10-0 Northwestern. Dan Conroy had made all of his field goals this year, 13. 
And 14 straight going back to last year. He misses a 38 yarder here as the Spartans remain scoreless. They have one of the better offensive teams in the Big Ten coming into today, averaging 34 points per contest. Northwestern, which has moved the ball just about every possession. An end around the mark, who's free in the secondary. And Mark finally brought out of bounds at midfield, a 29 yard run. He gets sprung by a block on Trumpy, number 29. And Trumpy's going to give a little fist pump. You're going to see him come in here and there's a knockout shot. <laughs> Every, all the Spartan defenders were pointing at Mark like here, here he is he's in the ballgame like watch for a reverse and they still couldn't stop it. You talked about the lack of four and five star recruits but a lot of true freshmen coming up big for Northwestern this year. Persa to Ebert and the junior makes the catch at the 33 yard line of Michigan State. Coming off a career effort 11 catches in the loss to Purdue two weeks ago. See big play and that could be fast tempo. Right away, they're lined up. Persa rolling out. In trouble. Cut it back. He's got room to run. Persa gets a block from Trumpy and out of bounds at the 11. A 22 yard run. Every defense that comes in here knows that they have to contain Dan Persa. Well, it's a little bit tougher than just saying it. He goes all the way to the right, all the way to the left, went to high school in Pennsylvania, and Chris, you know this, the big 33 game, he was the most valuable player in that ball game. That's the Pennsylvania Stars versus the Ohio Stars. Here's Adonis Smith, and the true freshman is down to the four-yard line. Looks like he maybe slipped on the wet turf. But boy, Michigan State just getting bruised and beaten up at the point of attack, guys. Exactly, and right there, Greg Jones had a chance to get him, but Adonis Smith showed a little bit of burst. Here's Smith again. This time hit in the backfield, but look at him push the pile. He might reach the end zone. They're going to mark him down just inside the one-yard line. You know what, guys? Last week, Pat Narduzzi came down to the field from the press box because he was so ticked off at how his defense was playing. I'm going to say this right now. If you're out in the hallway or in the stadium, get out of the way because Narduzzi's <laughs> probably heading down there. Because of this, his effort right here, guys. Looks like rugby. Scrum. <laughs> but you're right, Narduzzi, as a Fitzgerald thought it was a touchdown, and they're going to go quick snap here. Persa, quarterback, sneak, but wait. Michigan State called a timeout. They had like 15 guys on the field. Pat Narduzzi, as you mentioned, Chris, normally is up in the press box. He remains there for now. Six straight conference titles for Northwestern's women's lacrosse team and a national runner-up finish a year ago. Northwestern's football team looking to go up 16-0. First and goal on the one, Persa. Did not get in. There's Greg Jones, middle linebacker, coming in there to make the hit for the Spartans. You can tell when Persa is going to run the quarterback sneak, he'll rush up there and he gets real low in the stance, trying to hide from the defense lineman so they can't see him. Quickly up to the line. Let's see, watch if it's a sneak, because he's real low, because if you know he's up high now. But it's a snake. Persa got in. Touchdown, Wildcats. Second rushing touchdown today, fifth of the year for Dan Persa. He took the ball out of the running back's hands. He ducked. He ducked yeah. under, <laughs> under Greg Jones. Pat's oh. pleased with that. And Demos apparently okay. Good enough to come on and kick the point after after getting hurt on kickoff coverage. 17-0 Northwestern. Mark D'Antonio back down on the field, but unhappy guy right now. Pat Fitzgerald squad by 17. 
Back at Evanston, Ward Northwestern is all over Mark D'Antonio Spartans, their largest deficit this season. However, these two teams part of the largest comeback in the history of the football bowl subdivision when Michigan State in 2006, down 38 to 3, came back to win. Mark D'Antonio down on the field, first time coaching down there in a month. Spent the last two games up in the press box. Here's Bell. They're not just missing Keyshawn Martin on offense, also they don't have him as a return guy. And here it's a 17-point game as D.J. Young, starting left tackle for Michigan State, who left earlier with injury, is back out there. Cousins with time. A long throw caught in the Northwestern Territory at the 49, B.J. Cunningham. Here's a question, guys. Michigan State's not playing very well. What if, what if Mark D'Antonio, who is on the sideline, maybe he said, I'm going to be here first half. I'm going to I'm going to leave the sideline and go up to the press box in the second half. I mean, you know, it would be better if he were up in the press box the first half and they're getting 17 to nothing snookered and he goes down there and he says on the sideline. I mean, Narduzzi coming down. That's the defensive coordinator. Get the head coach down there. Fire him up. But. Bell be, powers it, for about a yard. It'd be interesting to see which way he goes with this. Well, to your point, last week, Pat Narduzzi, the defensive coordinator, came down at halftime saying that they were lacking energy. I think that's what you're saying, that, boy, if it was the other way around and they were down 17-0, at least he could go down and say, you guys are lacking energy, I'm going to be down here. Yeah. But now what do you do if you're Dan Tony? Yeah. There's Don Treadwell, who essentially was uh, the acting head coach even when Dan Tony was here. Treadwell. Narduzzi and coming over from Cincinnati with D'Antonio. So their fourth year on the stack. Cousins finds Dell, and he's inside the 30-yard line. Take a look now at our athletic trivia question. Which former Michigan State player had six touchdowns against Northwestern? That's a single-game Sparty record back in 1989. I think I have that one. Followed Lorenzo White as the starting tailback. I like what uh, Michigan State is doing offensively, getting Kirk Cousins involved in the game and let his arm go. Let's yeah, exactly. go. Going for 97 yards here in the first half. 12 attempts. They'll keep it on the ground here. Bell's got a big hole. Trying to get away from Peters. Can't. But still got the first down. This is this is a veteran Michigan State football team. They've got what is that? I count 15, 15 of their 22 starters are either fourth or fifth year seniors. So they've got a lot of experience. They're not going to get shattered. You know, they're just going to stay calm. They know they can come back and win this ball game. They can't do it all at once, but they need a score on this drive. Maybe on Bell getting a lot of carries. Cousins going to throw here. And overthrow intended for Cunningham, covered by Justin Vaughn. Vince Brown, again, in the face of Kirk Cousins, maybe disrupting that throw because Kirk does get a little bit of a hurry. When he feels pressure, he tends to throw off of that back foot to avoid any type of contact to the legs. Well, if he would have had a little bit more time, he could have waited and saw where the receiver was going to break and maybe would have a touchdown there. They go with three men in the backfield here on second and ten. The pitch to Bell, and he cannot get outside. And actually lost a couple yards on the play. Chased out by Vaughn. Now the answer to today's Aflac trivia question, which former Spartan six touchdowns against Northwestern in 89 is a single game Michigan State record. Chris, you said you know it, so who is it? Uh, Blake Ezor. Outstanding tough runner for the Spartans. They've had some good backs here over the years. Most recently, Justin or Ringer, Javon Ringer, a member of the Tennessee Titans. Mark D'Antonio's had to go with three running back system this year as they have not been consistent at that position. Pass play, obviously, on third and 12, and Cousins zips that one in there to Cunningham. And it looked like forward progress took him past the marker. It'll be a Michigan State first down. Good call there. I like the call. They had trips to the right, three wide receivers right, and they sent Cunningham in motion to the fourth guy. Basically had all three of them clear this out. Now watch number three. Just, just like a little trailer. 
Hit the trailer, let him run. That's the definition of flooding a zone, putting more receivers in the route areas than the defense can match up with. Edwin Baker in the game now at running back. From the seven yard line of Northwestern. Cousins off play action to Dell. Touchdown. Michigan State finally on the board late in the second quarter. Big time there, Chris. Big time throw and big time catch. And a big time score for a school that really needed something going in at halftime. Well, and the biggest thing of the drive is that the offense and that man right there, Coach Treadwell, decided to get Kirk Cousins involved in a football game and taking shots down the field. That's the key to the whole drive. 12th touchdown pass of the season for Kirk Cousins. And Dan Conroy makes it 17-7. Over number seven, Michigan State. And Dan Persa with two rushing touchdowns as we check in with Quint Kessnick. Coach, for you personally to be back on the field, how did it feel for you? Well, we're down 17-7. to That's all that's important right now. Focus is good. Check out, keep playing. You know, we can't get off the field and, uh, you know, can't allow them to drive down the field. we got to get the third and shorts. But yeah, defense, we'll, bounce, we'll, bounce, we'll bounce back. Defensively, what needs to change the most? Well, I think we've got to make tackles of space, continue to pressure the quarterback. Their quarterback's making plays. You know, we get a little pressure, he makes a play. So credit him. Uh, we'll keep playing. We'll be fine. Thanks, Coach. Thank All right, Quinn. 17-7, D'Antonio's bunch trailing at the half. Let's go to Reese, Mark, and Lou now and the Bud Light Halftime Report. Back in Evanston, Illinois, it has stopped raining. It remains overcast, but warm. Northwestern on top by 10. It could be a lot worse for Michigan State, which is seventh in the BCS standings, as the Wildcats fumbled on the one-yard line. Mark D'Antonio started the game on the field. First time he's been down there this long since the Notre Dame win. Spent the last two games up in the press box. RB Fields back along with Stephen Simmons as Northwestern will start the third quarter with the football. Wildcats trying to go to six and one on the season. And it will come out two to 20. Michigan State has not allowed a 100 yard rusher yet this year, but Dan Persa, the Wildcat quarterback, already with 47 yards. Guys, how does Michigan State get back in the game? What do they have to do to come back? Well, first of all, you got to control Persa. You heard Mark D'Antonio talk about their quarterback making plays. And the other thing, they got to think of the fact that they got a little reprieve when Northwestern fumbled the football on the one yard line going in, Bob. If you're Northwestern, you just got to keep playing. You know, play it like it's zero to zero. Persa, keep going. Just do the same stuff you did in the first half. That's what we're saying, but the fact that Michigan State's done a good job against running backs and Denard Robinson, but Persa has played better than Robinson did a couple weeks ago when Michigan State won in Ann Arbor. First road game for the Spartans outside the state of Michigan in Northwestern on first and ten. Gets about four on the ground with Mike Trumpy. It's a good job of Trumpy using his vision and quick little burst. Greg Jones, the All-American middle linebacker, came in unabated and missed the tackle. Persa to throw on second down. Everybody covered. And Persa gets away from a Spartan defender. And then Eric Gordon rides him out of bounds. Loss on the play. It was Colin Neely that was back there for Michigan State. Missed the tackle on Persa. You mentioned the Northwestern was able to run the football in the first half on Michigan State. They had 122 yards rushing. How about the fact that they passed for more yards than Michigan State? And yeah, big did. third down conversions too, which was the difference. Northwestern coming into the ball game, 50%, which is outstanding on third down offense. And Michigan State continues to get inconsistency out of its running backs. Only one first down on the ground in that first half. Gordon coming after Persa, dumps it off. Ball comes out. It's loose. Ruled a catch and a fumble. Johnny Adams forced the fumble for Michigan State. The Wildcats got it back, though. But they'll have to punt. That's close to whether it was a catch or not. They ruled it was. Looked like he had possession and became a runner after the catch. And guys, that's a big play by Keegan Grant, too, by the way. Recovering that fumble giving Northwestern a fighting chance on field position for Michigan State and not letting Michigan State get any momentum. 
without creating it themselves. Williams will punt. We'll see if Michigan State comes after it. Mark Dell is the deep man. Keyshawn Martin has not returned to the game, their normal punt returner. They didn't need him there, though. That punt goes out of bounds at the 49, and Michigan yeah. State will start in Northwestern territory. Exactly. Michigan State's got a great field position. Let's go down to the field and check in with Quinn Kesnick. Dave, I spoke to Pat Fitzgerald as he came flying out of the locker room as if he was ready to play. Gave me three points. First of all, the wind. Michigan State has the wind in this third quarter. Second, the way he says we're going to adjust the way we are attacking their pass protection. He thinks it's imperative that they get all over Kirk Cousins. And the third would be his cornerbacks. He said we have got to tackle better in space. Now they did not get a lot of pressure in Cousins on the long touchdown drive. Play action and Cousins looking downfield got hit there and still completed the pass to Cunningham inside the 25 brought down at the 21 by Mike Bolden or whatever Pats drew up didn't work the pressure's coming but it takes a long time to get there because this is a long pass route Kirk Cousins has time to view the field and throw a 17 to 20 yard pass that's outstanding protection I know you got got hit a little bit but still enough to get one away grease first drive, time first drive of the second half coming out who's going to who's going to get the momentum this is a big big play big drive for Michigan State Cousins throws out on the flat to Cunningham excellent open field tackle by Mike Bolden there's a flag down or excuse me uh, no flag down the uh, Goal post, yeah. here. Yep, windy here. That's, that's, that's blowing from, from our right to left. It's behind Michigan State. We already saw one missed field goal in the first half. Loss of one on the last play. Second and 11. Here's an end around to Benny Fowler. Blockers in front, and Fowler's gone. Touchdown, Spartans. Touchdown. Benny Fowler, the ball carrier. Now Mark D'Antonio told Quint Kesnick at halftime, we'll be fine, we'll bounce back. And they do within three minutes. Give Benny Fowler, the freshman, playing the role of Keyshawn Martin and making the most of it. Big play on a quick sweep with an excellent lead block by Foreman, number 67. First collegiate touchdown for Fowler. And Conroy makes it a three-point deficit. 17-14 Northwestern after Benny Fowler's rushing touchdown. See big Joel Foreman, number 67, getting a block on the little man, springing Fowler. Time to dance. Welcome back to Northwestern in Evanston, Illinois, where Michigan State has scored 14 unanswered points. And the Spartans with their highest standing in the BCS at number seven, coming back down 17 nothing. Touchdown run by Benny Fowler. Kevin Muma kicking off. Stephen Simmons. Going to take a knee. Effort. So he persevered, is what you're saying. Yes, he did, sir. Persa back to throw on first down. You guys didn't catch up. <laughs> Pulled in by Stewart at the 35. Gain of yes, four. we did. Well, yeah, we you did. Just didn't think it was fun. <laughs> yeah, we just right. didn't I mean, think it warranted a response. <laughs> Persevere. Got to throw a courtesy to him. Once the defensive coordinator, who's up in the booth, and last week came down at halftime and coached on the field. He was so mad at his players for their lack of energies in the booth in the second half. Rashad Lawrence, true freshman receiver, makes the grab and has the first down for Northwestern at the 43. Another first down. Two first downs on this drive, moving the chains, keeping the clock running. Darquez Denard on the coverage. He's playing for Chris L. Rucker, who remains suspended because of a DWI. He's one of their best defensive players, but Rucker is out. And Persa. Brought down, sacked at the 40-yard line by Tyler Hoover. And yeah, there was a miscommunication on a snap count right there. The ball was snapped to person. A lot of the offensive linemen, and I know Trumpy, who's in the backfield, did not move, which is why you saw the quick pressure by the spark defense.
Ursa completes it to Lawrence again. And he steps out of bounds at the 47 yard line. As the Michigan State training staff tends to drill worthy. They're poked in the eye, putting uh, the Quintestic down on the field. And they're putting a face shield on his uh, helmet. Big third and six for Northwestern. Here comes a blitz, and Persa gets out of there. Oh, he got drilled, but he may have fallen forward to the first down marker. He got it based on the spot. Is How about this, that? Is this a tough kid or what? It all depends on the spot. You know, I'm going to beat a dead horse here, but John Mish comes in, and you have a guy that knows that he's vital and it's urgent that he gets the first down, and he just basically ran Mish over. Trumpy to the outside. And out of bounds at the 29 yard line. 18 yard run. Bad angle by Johnny Adams. Jumps inside. Demetrius Fields just seals them, throwing the key block for Trumpy to hit the corner. Northwestern on the move. Rolling out is Persa. Caught by Stewart. Gain of eight. Remember, Persa coming in, completing 78% of his passes to lead the nation. And that's the third or fourth time in this drive that they've had trips to the wide side of the field and threw it to the outside guy. No coverage outside. Greg Jones out of the game right now for Michigan State. 11th play of the drive, and it looks like another first down. Adonis Smith straight ahead. Greg Jones out of the game. Maybe catching a blow. You have Max Bula in there. Son of Sh uh, Shane Bula, former linebacker, NFL coach, my old coach, Hank Bula. He's going to be a good player. He's going to be a good player, right? Yes, sir. He's got good roots. Pressure coming up the middle. And Persa has Lawrence. And he gets leveled by Adams, but good job to stay in bounds. Earlier in the game, a couple times he went out of bounds, but he went upfield that time and got about nine. Smart by a true freshman. And playing like he wants guys to play, Pat Fitzgerald. No ducking out. Get extra yards, extra inches. Inside run of Donna Smith, and he gets planted close to the first down marker. Michigan State substituting four guys. 14th play of the drive coming up for Northwestern. After a big stop when Michigan State had field position at midfield. Persa rolling left and stacked up at the six yard line. Jones leading the charge there for MSU along with Anthony Rashad White. Huge drive as we mentioned earlier. What's it, 14 plays now? Taking time off the clock. Persa, the leading passer, obviously, and the leading rusher on this Wildcat team. Here's second and goal. Persa with time, going to take off, and Persa's in his third rushing touchdown. the toughness of this kid. And the lead back to 10 for Northwestern. Huge drive, just a huge drive. Danny Persa got him in. It was his mind and his will. He really wanted to throw this ball. He stays in the pocket, stays in the pocket, and then scrambles straight up the middle, does a little twist to get into the end zone for the touchdown. But this takes time off the clock and points on the, on the clock, on the scoreboard. 
Yes. <laughs> Caper, the deep man, along with Bell. As Northwestern's up 10, we are done with commercials for the remainder of the uh, third quarter. So keep it here with us. Short kick. The guy who got caught up in the wind. And the ball is muffed. Michigan State picks it up. The whistle's blue. It was muffed by Michigan State at the 24 yard line. Spartans got it back anyway. And you might say Michigan State got it back anyway, but when you hear that whistle, you're like Pavlov's dogs, man. You're trained to slow down so you don't get a 15 yarder. That's a quick whistle. That's on them. And they know it. Pat has a right to complain about it. Now how do you blow the whistle until you're sure the guy catches it? You see the. Now there's a fair catcher signaling for the trying to keep the sun out of his eyes, but the whistle's blue as you heard. And again, you can make the argument, well, Michigan State got it anyway. And again, I'm going to make the point players are trained to stop on whistle. Steve Gardner was uh, the man who muffed it by Michigan State as the football. Pump fake. Cousins looking deep. And his pass caught. For a Michigan State first down. Michigan State 3 0 in the Big Ten. Spartans do not play Ohio State. They're down by 10 here. Baker gets it to about the 49, so it'll make it about third and 12. Vince Brown on the stop. Northwestern comes into this game with a record of 5 and 1, 1 and 1 in the Big Ten. Boy, if Northwestern wins today and Wisconsin knocks off Iowa. Who knows how this thing's going to play out yeah. in the Big Ten? Nobody talks about Northwestern in the Big Ten chase. I'll tell you, at home, they're a very, very good football team. I've done enough games here. They can play with anybody, anytime at this place. It's second and 12. It'll be likely the final play of the third quarter. As Cousins has his man Cunningham again. They've hooked up a lot here today, and it'll be a first down at the Northwestern 35 when the fourth quarter begins in Evanston. Wildcats looking for the upset, leading by 10. Michigan State seventh in the BCS standings, trails Northwestern by 10 as we start the fourth quarter here at Ryan Field. Got the students down there. A little bit like jump around in Wisconsin, but look at that. I like it. Late arriving because of the rain, but the skies have parted. The sun is out here in Evanston. Play fake on first down at the Northwestern 35. And Kirk Cousins looking for Cunningham, and it's broken up in the end zone by Jordan Maben, who's played a heck of a game. He had it, but the ball just hung up a little bit. He's throwing back into that win. Boy, if you're a corner, Bob, and you undercut that, you better make a play. And got a little bit of advantage with the right arm push. Take a look at his right arm. Knocking Cunningham yeah. off balance, able to make a play, outstanding play. Well, if he just gets that ball down the field and across a little bit more, like I say, hung up in the wind. Well, if you're long, you're never wrong. Play action, and Cousins being chased by Quinton Davey, and Cousins goes down hard as he throws it out of bounds. Third and long coming up as we look at our Bud Light playbook. Northwestern done a good job on third down defense again today. Especially on the running downs, coming up with big plays. And the reason why they're good on third down is all about fundamentals. They're smart, they get in throwing lanes, and they're a good tackling football team. What Pat tell us yesterday says it's because we work on it. We have periods where we defensively and offensively we work on third down conversions and stopping third downs. Our defense coming in the game is 29 percent. Cousins throws underneath to Dell and he's going to come up about six yards short of the first down. They have a kicker in Dan Conroy who has a big leg but they're trying to create some type of field position so you have to execute the pooch kick. And if you're Northwestern, obvious fake alerts, ears up, eyes up, everything on high alert for any type of fake. Obviously saw a fake field goal called by D'Antonio in overtime to beat Notre Dame. 
And the guy who threw the pass is not just the holder, but he's also the punter. Going to try to pin Northwestern deep. And no, he's going to he's going to pass. It's a fake and it's caught. Do you believe that? It worked again. Benny Fowler with the first down catch. <laughs> Antonio <laughs> said, "No way, Northwestern's <laughs> going to think we're going to do that." Seriously? I mean, seriously. Yeah, he's got he's got some guts. He did this against Notre Dame in overtime, and it's against Jordan Maven. A good <laughs> corner is getting nosy, and and Pat put his defense and kept his defense on the field and punch safe. It's called. I mean, that's ridiculous. You know what this is? This is just smart special teams play. They got they got some good good vibes by watching the special teams the kicking games that that this could happen could be successful and they pull it out at the right time Going all Matt Hatter on us first down at the Northwestern 15 Cousins to Dell touchdown Michigan State the next play after the fake punt the Spartans get a touch an opportunity to get within a field goal. It's a two-level route. Smash, corner, and an excellent throw away from the safety on the back shoulder of Dell. Execution at the highest level by Kirk Cousins. Second touchdown pass today by Cousins, 13th on the year. Both of his touchdown passes today have been to Mark Dell. Conroy to cut the Northwestern lead to three. 24 21. Fake field goal in overtime for the game winning score against Notre Dame. Fake punt here in the fourth quarter against Northwestern. Then the touchdown pass, Cousins to Dell and Sparty within a field goal. Back at Evanston after Northwestern's 15 play touchdown drive Michigan State with an 11 play 75 yard touchdown drive highlighted by a fake punt as Bates hits Fowler for a first down the next place a touchdown short kickoff because of the wind picked up by Arby Fields and Fields is loose at the 40 yard line. Perso wide open is Charles Brown first down inside the Michigan State 30 yard line. What a great call by Mick McCall and what a great execution. Three man rush plenty of time lots of vision. That's just huge for this game downwind big first down. They got 27 yards Perso to the air again being chased by Neely outrunning the defensive lineman. Persa with a great cutback move finally dropped by Hyde at the 14 yard line a 15 yard scamper nails versus nails and watch this division able to stop on a dime and again the tempo after big plays Northwestern lives off of it inside run Adonis Smith to the 11 yard line. I want to go back to that big pass play. They also worked our true freshman Isaiah Lewis who has to carry that receiver down the field a little bit longer. They knew where he was. I believe they identified where the true freshman was and bam Charles Brown on the catch. How about again third down conversions by Northwest. Well, that was third that was, ten. Yeah, that was extraordinary there. Uh, you, Persa looking for the throwback, but it's not there. And Persa goes down at the 13. Tyler Hoover there from Michigan State. Loss of a couple, another third and long. Coming up for Northwestern. I think after that long run that Persa had, avoiding some defensive linemen running over there, cutting back inside, I think he's still a little bit winded. That's only the that's one of the bad things about this up-tempo, hurry-up offense. You don't give your quarterback time to catch his breath. Well, you see those shoulder pads going up and down in a hurry. Sixth Spartan sack today. Third and nine. Persa hit. Seventh sack for Michigan State. First man there was Jarrell Worthy. 
And Northwestern might be out of field goal range because Stefan Demos has missed a handful of field goals this year. Drill Worthy coming from the inside. Nice, nice swim move. Sets up the offensive blocker to the right, comes with a quick swim, like an overhand stroke, just like you saw, is able to convert to sack. They lost 10 yards. Well, it's a 41-yard attempt for Demos, who is 8 of 13 coming into today. Got one field goal made this afternoon. He's been battling injury, but has no problem with this one. And Dan Persa limping a bit after that lengthy drive. Chewed up a lot of yards on the ground, and Demos nails a 41-yarder to make it a six-point game. Dan Persa with three rushing touchdowns for Northwestern today. Could not get them in the end zone on the last drive. They settled for a field goal, and it's a six-point game. 9.47 remaining here in Evanston. after the made field goal kicking off and with the benefit of the win kicks it out of the end zone. Michigan State 7 and 0 for the first time since 1966 when it was ranked number two against Eric Parsegian's Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Number two versus number one they played with 10 all tie. Both schools get national championships. Era, of course, went to Notre Dame from Northwestern, where he led the Wildcats to a number one ranking in 1962. That was uh, when I was my era at Purdue. We lost two games that year to both those two schools. Hmm. And I, I'd give them the national championship, let them split it. Play action, and Cousins has an open man. It's caught around the 30-yard line by Dell. That's the ninth catch for Dell today. He also has two touchdowns. Nice uh, play call, too, coming out inside your own 15-yard line. Don Treadwell, the offensive coordinator. Good. The best time to throw, Chris, and you'll know this, too, is on first down because, you know, it's the, they have to play run and pass, and I always love to throw on first down. Fourth year for Don Treadwell as the offensive coordinator at Michigan State. So what he dials up here, going to be another play fake, and Cousins in trouble, sack by McNall, back at the 18-yard line. Jack DiNardo got pressure as well. That's the first sack today for Northwestern. And a total breakdown on the left side of Michigan State's offensive line. You see number 67, Joel Foreman, step to his right instead of stepping out to his left. That tells me there was a miscommunication in protection. You got Jack DiNardo, nephew of Jared DiNardo, former coach, in on the play. Well, they blitz the two linebackers, Williams and McDowell, dialing up a blitz on first down. That'll, that'll shut him down. So a loss of 10. Cousins with time and a great catch by Nickel. A gain of 18 out to the 38-yard line. This is good stuff. First down pass for Michigan State. First down blitz for Northwestern. Come right back. Michigan State with a good pitch and catch. This is uh, this is good stuff. Northwesterns can help themselves if Quinton Davies jams at number two receiver or at least disrupts the timing because of the pass rush and Nickel might not have came free. Nickel was uh, Sam Bradford's backup at Oklahoma, transferred to Michigan State. Now he's a wide receiver, making a big catch. So it's third down and two. They run Baker, first down Spartans. Michigan State with two timeouts remaining. They'll stop the clock to move the chains and reset the ball, and now it starts again. And just a point to me, it doesn't look like the wind is affecting the ball of Kirk Cousins because he's thrown two fastballs yeah. on time and on target. Yeah. It affected uh, Bates, when, uh, the punter, when he threw that ball yeah. a little earlier, but uh, you're right. This kid, Kirk Cousins has a strong arm. Another play fake. 
And Cousins unloading to Cunningham. It's pulled in at the 39 yard line. It's a six point Northwestern lead and it could be a lot worse on first and goal from the one in the first quarter with the Wildcats up seven nothing already. They fumble the football. Jacob Schmidt coughs it up. Michigan State recovers. Still Northwestern led 17 to nothing at one point in this game. Play fake again. Cousins being chased by Davey. Going for Cunningham and it's out of bounds. This is, uh, this is big time right here in Michigan State. You're down by six. You've got four minutes and 20 seconds to go. You're on the road in the Big Ten. You've got time. You've got the players. You've got the knowledge. You just have to do it. You just take it down. You're 7-0. You're seventh in the country. Let's, let's go do it. The difference in Kirk Cousins last year and Kirk Cousins this year is this year's Kirk Cousins threw that out of bounds. Last year, he might have thrown it up for grabs. Cousins off play action his arm hit balls out recovered by Michigan State ruled a fumble forced by Vince Brown so it's a loss of six I agree with what you said about Cousins but sometimes in the pocket you got to know when to get out of there or to throw it he took a little bit too much time there he had more than enough time to throw it that's a great job of Vince Brown running the hoop, knowing he's not going to get a hit, but swinging that right arm around to club the throwing hand before the ball is released. They're only 4-12 on third down today, last in the Big Ten in third down conversions. They got to get 15. Cousins finds nickel, and he'll get about 14. Great. And play. Michigan State will go for it on fourth down and one. <laughs> And as a defender, Bob, that's my point. If you allow the number two or inside receivers yeah. to run straight down the field, you can't cover them because there's too much pressure on the safeties. What's the call here, guys, on fourth down and a yard? I put it in Edward Baker's hands. I don't know if he's in the ball game, but that's who I'd have in the ball game because he converted the last third and short. Now they're going to spread it out here. It's I'd, I'd Cunningham in the back there. Yeah, I'd, get, I'd, I'd let him throw it. To the left, to the outside receiver. One on one. Little roll to the left, soft pass that's caught for a first down in traffic by Charlie Gant. What a that's, throw by Cousins. It's the same thing they did earlier, Chris, only to the left side. The outside guy was covered up, and he, he chose the inside receiver. Did any one of the four receivers that gets open. You see Gant right there. Nate Williams overplays it. Kirk Cousins allows the linebacker to overplay, and you have to be patient as a quarterback to trust oh, yeah. that Gant sees what right. he sees. Right, right. Another pass play. Cousins to Baker out of the backfield. And Baker makes two Wildcats miss and has a Spartan first down inside the 10. First and goal, Michigan State. Opportunity perhaps to take the lead on this possession. Bryce McNall is coming in. He has to understand where his defenders are. He had a defender on the outside, so you've got to be certain you come inside out on the play. He overran it, and Baker was able to pick up about eight to ten extra yards. Cousins with time. End zone Cunningham. It is broken up and then caught. Touchdown. It was deflected by Peters and then caught out of the air by Cunningham. Eleven play, 88-yard drive. It took five minutes and 18 seconds. And now Dan Conroy to give Michigan State the lead. Spartans by one with two minutes to play. They were down 17-0 in the first half. See if Mark. 
throws a little bit of enthusiasm and excitement behind this big touchdown. Let's take a look. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I'll take a deflection. It is great, though, to see Mark back down in the field. He's been up in the press box the last couple games after missing two games following the heart attack suffered after the win against Notre Dame. All right, one thing to note, Dan Purser, remember, was shaken up a little bit and was limping. And what's been a big factor in this football game is Dan Purser's ability to run the football and get positive yards. Remember, Demos has been bothered by a hip injury and then shaken up earlier in this game covering a kick and you could see him limping after his last field goal we'll have the wind at his back and this kickoff will be into the wind for Michigan State you see the return man lined up at the 15 and 20 yard line as opposed normally with a no win situation or back at the goal line Northwestern has all of its timeouts remaining good kick though Mark Good return to the 33 yard line. Based on what we just talked about, the injury to Demos and the wind at the back of the Northwestern Wildcats, where do you think the Wildcats need to get to for their kicker to have a legitimate shot? I think comfortably to the 25 yard line. That'll be a 42 yard field goal with some wind. Maybe, maybe not, but I'm saying comfortably at the 25. Maybe the 30, it'll be a 47. I think probably the 30 to 31 because he had a lot of room left on that last field goal he made. Yeah, that was a 41 yarder. He's also made a 37 yarder in this game. Hurst at a throw. Persa being chased. Flag down. Going to be a holding call. Persa slammed out of bounds. Personal foul. Offense number 75. 15 yard penalty. First down. That's on the left tackle, El Netter. So that'll back Northwestern up to its 18 yard line. That's a killer. See right there number 75 in purple getting his left hand on the face mask and chin of Colin Neal. You got to be smart and remove it immediately. Persa going deep and overthrew Ebert. Got behind a couple of Spartans. It'll be second and 20. Michigan State is playing man coverage in the secondary, which gives you an opportunity to hit some long throws. If, if they continue to play man, every offense has what I call man beaters, which is a lot of routes that are picks oh, and yeah. crossing routes. And then they're also having somebody spy, maybe a linebacker spy on Persa, so they can hopefully get up and tackle. Low snap, Persa scoops and throws to Stewart. And Stewart gets well, maybe about eight, so it brings up third and around 13. Northwestern has all of its timeouts remaining. We'll use one here. And understand now, it's four down territory. That's an obvious statement, but you don't have to run a play to get 13 yards. So you look at this down as second and 13. So you might want to have a play to get eight, you might have a play to get six, and know that you'll be still be in a manageable four down situation. Northwestern among the best in the nation in third down conversions. This is a third and 12. Worthy's been creating a lot of pressure right there. Number 99. Persa has pressure in his face and overthrows Ebert again. And that's the key pressure in his face. He couldn't see real well. He knew where he wanted to go with the ball. He just threw it a little bit too far. And that's because the guy we circled, number 99, Jarrell Worthy, look at that. That power rush is going up for the block shot. He's lucky he didn't hit his helmet, or that would have been 15. So it's fourth and 12. Northwestern down a point. We've got the true freshman up top who's holding his own so far. And Denard been holding his own all game. Man coverage. Persa with time and overthrows Ebert by a mile. Spartans take over. Sometimes when you have the wind, it's not your best friend because that ball just sailed. You think that was a problem on the other two passes as well? Oh, yes, I do. 
one of one of them was having the man in your face, but this one just this ball just takes off. He had him. He knows it too. He'd love to have that back. Sometimes when you're throwing with the wind, it's just as, as difficult as when you're throwing into the wind because the ball will sail on you. So it's really an, in, in, an incomplete science when you're trying to throw either way. Northwestern not done yet. Two timeouts remaining in a minute 26 on the clock. Here's Baker. And the Wildcats finally get him down, but it's after he got five yards. They'll use a timeout here. How about Kirk Cousins, one of the most improved quarterbacks in the country on that last drive? Seven of eight, 98 yards passing, an 88-yard drive, but because of the sack, he had 98 yards passing, and the go-ahead touchdown to B.J. Cunningham. Here's Baker again. And gets about a yard, so third down coming up as Northwestern uses its final timeout. Michigan State scored on touchdowns on three of their five second half possessions. Do you go for the first down, maybe throw on the ball here and risk stopping the clock if you get an incompletion, or do you just run the ball on third and fourth? I play the percentages. I think you run the ball, make sure you reiterate to Edwin Baker, who will probably be the recipient of the football, two arms around it, ultimate protection. He had a fumble in the first quarter. It'll be a run play. Baker got the first down and more. Baker, touchdown, Spartans! But here's the thing. Even with the extra point, it's still a one-possession game, and Northwestern's going to get the ball. That could end up hurting Michigan State in the end, believe it or not. That's Try to tell that kid when he got to the 10-yard line <laughs> <laughs> to fall down. <laughs> you know, we saw it last year with Maurice Jones-Drew in the NFL that could have scored a touchdown and he goes down. That's hard to tell, though, a college kid. Conroy to make it an eight-point game. No, it's not out of the realm of possibility that Northwestern, and I'm not saying they did it, but you might say let them score to make it an eight-point game. We'll get the ball back with a minute. It doesn't look like the effort that that was the plan because Peters does have a shot at him right here. Two guys have a shot. And Edward Baker showing his power and ability to finish. No timeouts remaining for Northwestern. You have plenty of time in minute seven. You're going to presume that they're going to get decent field position. You want to avoid all penalties at all costs if you're on a return team of the Wildcats. And now Muma's got a kick into the wind, so you see the receivers for Northwestern up around the 15-yard line. There's plenty of time for Dan Persa to work with, but again, no timeouts. They would need a touchdown and a two-point conversion. The kick hung up in the wind at the 15-yard line. Here's true freshman Venrick Mark. And he's out to the 34. 62 seconds left for Northwestern, down eight. Just make first downs. Get first downs, get the ball out of bounds. First and ten. Remember, too, Purse is dangerous as a runner. If he's able to scramble, takes off here, breaks a couple tackles. Purse looking for the sideline, gets there, and didn't pick up any yardage and took seven seconds off the clock. A smart play by Denard, number 31, avoiding any type of contact and also a heady play by Persa, a sprint to the sidelines. This is where you want to you want to spread the field with the receivers. You got four receivers, five receivers, and run them straight up the field. And hopefully, you can throw a dart in between the defenders. Ursa looking deep. It's picked off. Eric Gordon with the interception. Michigan State's going to win. Northwestern, number 29, half the distance to the goal line. 
Michigan State keeps the ball. First down. So Michigan State down 17 to nothing in the first half comes back leads Northwestern by eight with 44 seconds left and the Wildcats cannot stop the clock big win for Michigan State on the road adverse circumstances behind coming back you almost get the feeling that they're that that quote unquote team of destiny after all they've been through and persevered there's some very difficult situations they'll be tested next week in Iowa City I was got a big one coming up next on ABC and ESPN taking on Wisconsin. Wisconsin just coming off that big win last week of Ohio State. Really? They beat them? <laughs> <laughs> Great to see Mark Antonio back down on the field and healthy. His team 8 and 0, 4 and 0 in the Big 10. Here's Quint. Coach Coach is just uh, walking to congratulate some of the coordinators for Northwestern. Coach, down 17 to nothing. What, what were you thinking? Well, I knew we'd play hard and get back in the football game. So, uh, you know, come out and play. You know, that was our message to our football team. You know, if you're going to be a champion football team, you got to play well when you're down. You got to come back. You got to show that you have that ability. So I think we're, that's what we did. You called another fake punt. Where, where did that one come from? Oh, that's called mousetrap. Got to let them take, take the cheese. Congratulations, Coach. There's the big smile. <laughs> the fake field goal that beats Notre Dame, the fake punt that helps in beating Northwestern. College football scoreboard presented by Acura. Up next here on ESPN. For Bob, Chris, Quinn, our entire team.